like Shecky, Chicky, or Jackie. Uh, though my next guest may have a, a plain name, his humor is far from ordinary. And you can see him with Crystal Gale at the Sahara Tahoe starting March 18th. Here is George Miller. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I was here a while back, Mike and I were talking about, uh, we were on the panel, we were talking about game shows, and I told him I like the game shows because they always tell a little bit about each person who's trying to win the money. Our next contestant, Mr. Larry Adams, he's a masochistic bigot. <laughs> Larry enjoys chicken fried steak and being thrown to the ground by Filipinos. So anyway, since that time, I got to go on a game show and boy, I froze up. I didn't get anything zip, nothing at all. They were going to give me the consolation prize, the luggage, if I could answer one of those real easy questions like who is married in Grant's, t uh, who is buried in Grant's tomb, right? Yeah, yeah. They said, what is the opposite of white? I got nervous and said, yoke. <laughs> I got nothing, right? I watch game shows in the morning. I watch public service announcements late at night because they always assume that the audience is stupid. Are you fed up with crime? No, we want some more. <laughs> first time I ever watched TV was a little kid. My grandparents' house, they had the first TV on the block. They were real religious, you know, fire and brimstone. If you're not good, you're going to hell. And I grew up fearing that. I got to be good. There couldn't be a worse possible fate. But my attitude changed a couple years ago. I saw that movie, The Exorcist. Remember the demon? The demon says something like, your mother does perverted acts in hell. I thought, well, maybe it's bad, but apparently they do have a recreation period. <laughs> and you know what? My mom would always regulate whatever I would watch. She would say, you can or you can't. She would always make me feel real insecure. I remember on my 20th birthday, instead of saying happy birthday and all that, she had to bring out the fact that Charles Percy, the senator from Illinois, when he was 20, he was the head of Bell & Howell Corporation. Can you see that? A 20-year-old kid. Yeah, we'll have a stockholders meeting at 10 o'clock. I'm flying to the coast at noon. I'll be meeting with the president of General Motors at 5 p.m. When I was 20, I was working at McDonald's. Uh, you want lids on these? <laughs> Thank you. There was a couple next door, the Drake family. They had a TV also, see? And you could go over there, but they would always be arguing, and you couldn't hear anything. It was always the same argument. My parents are not crazy. Oh, they're not crazy? You don't think it's a little bit peculiar? They ain't their two sons, liver and bacon? You don't think that's a little bit, uh... It doesn't mean they're crazy. You're not facing facts, onions. <laughs> so I kind of grew up with television, you know. And today, I like to watch it because you see people that you'd never get to see in real life. Like, I always watch Jimmy Carter. Because even if you like him or don't, isn't he the most low-key, soft-spoken man you've ever seen? My goodness, it's like Pa Kettle on Valium. The guy is very, uh, you know, very low-key man, yeah. And obviously, whether you like him or not, you have to ad admit it, the guy has aged in his job. What if Reagan gets in? He looks like that now. <laughs> He looks like that guy who ate Dan and yogurt, which pleased his mother very much. <laughs> so you get to see famous people, and you get to see people who are becoming well-known, like David Letterman was on here a couple of weeks ago, and he's going to be on again soon. He's going to come out and rent out the space between his front teeth to a family of boat people. So uh, <laughs> I can see that's of interest to virtually nobody. Okay. <laughs> But, oh, I saw one of those guys, uh, what, what do you call it? They write the books that help you out. Self-help books. Gee, very good, George. And, uh, yeah, so the guy said, this is great, in an awkward situation, in an embarrassing situation, what you should do is always pay a compliment, and that will kind of lessen the tension. So I remembered that, and I'm talking to this guy, see? I didn't know him very well. His toupee blew onto the sidewalk. <laughs> so I thought, now's my chance, right? So I said, uh, gee, I like your hair like that. It's really nice. <laughs> I like those cooking shows, too, and I always like to watch people cook. Well, coming over today, we had the Chinese food, which I like, but it is true what they say. An hour later, you're hungry again. 
but that doesn't have anything to do with what I was talking about. I just thought of it. I was in this restaurant recently, and the, oh, the waiter was really a creep. You know, he wanted to make sure that I knew about the tipping procedure so he wouldn't miss out on any of the money, right? But I played dumb. And he comes over right in the middle of the meal and he says, Be sure to leave 15 or 20 percent. Oh, no. I eat everything on my plate. <laughs> And I love Italian food. That's my favorite. I just, uh, the only thing is you eat it, and five or six days later, you're hungry again. It's... <laughs> and by coincidence, talking about Ann Landers, a lady that you get to read for years and years, finally you get to see on TV through the talk shows. And uh, the best correspondence I've read, a lady wrote in, she said, Dear Ann, I don't know what to do. I've been having a torrid love affair with a married man whose wife has been out of the city. Recently she came back, and I think she suspects something. Every time I go over there now, his wife won't open the door. What should I do? And Ann wrote back a typical answer. What's the matter with you? This man is married. Of course his wife won't open the door. You need more help than I can give you. See your clergyman. And the woman wrote back, I'd like to, but every time I go over there, his wife won't open the door. <laughs> been real nice. get my car started. Well, you flooded it. <laughs> yep, it's flooded, all right. Are you sure? Listen, I know about cars, I'm telling you. All four of your tires are flooded. <laughs> I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I said thank you. I should have said thank you. He seems a New England. I don't know. In a, is it in appearance or uh, certain, uh, not in conversation, not in talk? Certain of us are hicks at heart. Ah. I have been called a hick. Will Rogers, uh, you said Will Rogers of the Sunset Strip or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're Seattle. I mean, that's hardly a hick. Yeah, but I was in Seattle. Uh, I used to think of myself as Mr. Swinger, which in Seattle means you take a heavy dose of contact and then go out and drive and operate machinery. <laughs> Operate machinery. <laughs> Not very nice. I apologize to the people in Seattle who aren't watching anyway. <laughs> you don't often do a joke like you did. Uh, 120. That's, yeah, I'll yeah, tell you. Right, right. Let me tell you something. Like, on the road sometimes, I'll need to... Do you have favorite ones that you yeah. call on? Yeah. This, surefire laughs. Yeah, here's a, here's a surefire laugh. And I got this. You know how I got this, because I've done it on your show before. And I saw you. I don't know if you told it to Bobby Vinton on your show, or Bobby Vinton told it to you. Oh, no, no, no. It, you know Bobby Vinton? Yes. Okay, the let's, car. Let, let's do, yeah, let's do the, the punchline together. Can okay. we do this? Let's yeah. work together on this. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. guy, I'll do the front part. This guy picked up really a dumb hitchhiker, and he said, before we go anyplace, there might be something wrong with my right rear blinker. Will you go back there and check it? And the guy went back there, and he said, is it working? And the real dumb hitchhiker said, yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. I love it. Off again. I don't know we we did it again. It. <laughs> sure fire. <laughs> we'll be back after this message. <laughs> My next uh, guest is a real good friend of mine, and uh, that's how I can say all those ugly uh, things. Oh, ugly.